very good morning to all of you my friends my name is shahbaz ali today i am going to explain about the gears first of all what is the meaning of gears gears are used to transmit the motion from one shaft to another shaft by direct contact now let us consider this is my first shaft this is my second shaft if i want to transmit the motion of this shaft to this shaft then i will i will use a gear first of all if power transmitter between the shaft is small then motion may be transferred by using a disc if there is no slip then motion of one shaft can easily transmitted to the other but what happen if power transmitted increases then there is a the chances to there slip if there is slip then no definite motion from one shaft to another shaft be transmitted then to avoid this we use a gear actually gears called disc with teeth is known as gear now i am using that linear velocity of the gear you can see that vp vp is the velocity of the gear vp is equal to omega 1 is equal to r1 omega 1 r1 is equal to omega 2 r2 where omega is equal to angular acceler angular velocity and it is equal to 2 pi n r1 2 pi n1 into r1 is equal to 2 pi n2 into r2 where number of rotation of a gear is inversely proportional to the radii of the disc now comes to the classification of gears what is the classification of gears gears can be classified according to the relative position of the axis of the shaft then there are two types of classification of gears first is parallel shaft by the name we can say that if two shaft are parallel then they are called a parallel shaft then what types of gear we used they first of all spur gears spur gears in spur gears teeth are straight and they are parallel to the axis of the shaft now comes to the advantages and disadvantages of spur gear advantages that in spur gear there is no axial load and the disadvantages is at the time of engagement of the spur gear there is sudden application of load and due to which there is high impact stresses and excessive noise at high speed further we can we can divide the gears into two parts that is first is external gear second is internal gear external gear means teeth have external and internal gear means teeth have internal and if two external gears mesh towards mesh to each other then the rotation axis of rotation of the both shaft are opposite to each other let us consider this is my first shaft and having a gear having external teeth this is my second shaft having external teeth if i mesh to each other then the axis of rotation will be opposite to each other so these are the example of external gear but internal gear means having internal teeth then if one external gear one internal gear mesh towards in mesh to each other then the axis of rotation will be the same now comes to the rack and pinion rack and pinion is a special type of spur gear they are used to transmit the motion from rotary motion to translatory motion that it is used in steering application now third one is helical gear in helical gear teeth are curved that is spherical that is curved in shape in which and there is a condition for meshing the helical gear first condition is that both having the same helix angle and second is have one teeth and second teeth having the opposite hand now the advantage of helical gear at the time of engagement there is no sudden application of load why because at the time of engagement of helical gear contact occurs at the point of leading edge of the curved teeth and if there is no sudden application of load then there will be low impact stresses and very low noise at high speed that we can say that helical gear are used for high speed now comes to the disadvantage of helical gear the disadvantage of helical gear is there is more axial load in helical gear now comes to the double helical gear by the name we can say that double helical means pair of helical but one right hand helix second left hand helix if there is a group between the right hand helix and left hand helix then we can say that it is a double helical gear but if there is no group that is the right hand helix and left hand helix meet at a common apex then we can say that it is a herring bone gear now comes the advantage of helical gear double helical gear the advantage of double helical gear is that in case of helical gear there is an axial load but in case of double helical there is an axial load but they cancel each other so double helical gear can be used for high transmission of power another example that intersecting shaft by the 
Nay, we can say that if one if the axis of one shaft intersect the axis of second shaft, then it is called intersecting shaft. You can say that this is my first shaft and this is my second shaft. If the axis of this shaft intersect at this point, then it is known as intersecting shaft. Then what types of gear we used in intersecting shaft? That is a bevel gear. Bevel gear are two types of bevel gear. First is straight bevel gear. Second is helical bevel gear. Helical bevel gear. By the way, we can say that in straight bevel gear, teeth are straight. But this as this is an example of bevel gear, straight bevel gear, in which teeth are straight and radial to the point of intersection of the two shaft. And the this bevel gear are used to transmit the motion from one shaft to another shaft, which are at right angle. That is 90 degree to each other. Now comes to the uh, helical bevel gear. In helical bevel gear, teeth are helical. That is curved in shape. As I told you, in helical bevel gear, uh, in helical spur gear, that are same. In helical bevel gear, that the example is same. That the advantage is same. That uh, the advantage is that at the time of engagement of helical bevel gear, there is no axle. Uh, there is no sudden application of load because contact occurs at the point of leading edges of the curved teeth. Now comes to the meter gear. Meter gear means, let us consider two gears of same size, but these gears are used to transmit the power from one shaft to another shaft which are right angle. Let us consider this is my first shaft, this is my second shaft and the axis, the axis is going to this and axis is going to this. Then they meet at a common point so that intersect each other. After that, now comes to the gear terminology. That in gear, what types of terminology we use? What types of terminology we are using nowadays? Suppose this is my tooth. This are tooth and these are some parameters. First of all, I will explain about addendum circle. What is addendum circle? The circle passing through the tips of the teeth is known as addendum circle. And the circle which passes through the bottom of the teeth is known as dedendum circle. Now, addendum and dedendum. Addendum is the, these are addendum. It is the radial height. It is a radial height above the piece circle of a tooth is known as addendum and its value is one module and dedendum is the dedendum is the distance it is the radial depth of a tooth below the piece circle this is my piece circle this is my addendum circle this is my dedendum circle and these are addendum these are dedendum now comes to the face width Face width is the length of the tooth which is which is parallel to the axis of the shaft. We can say that. And now comes the top line. Top line means the top surface of a tooth is known as top line, and bottom surface of the tooth is known as bottom line. And working depth. Working depth means let us consider this is my first gear, this is my second gear. And the distance, it is the, the space between the two tooth, the space between the tooth along the piece circle is known as space width now working depth means working depth is the maximum depth to which a teeth penetrates into the space of another teeth is known as maximum depth working depth now comes to the uh, clearance it is a radial difference it is a radial height between the addendum and addendum thanks for watching and i, I and i would like to more uploads this video for you thank you